Hey, this is James Arnold Taylor, voice actor, the voice of Yeah, but dabba do, Fred Flintstone. Johnny Test, who's 11 years old and totally awesome. Ratchet from Ratchet and Clank. Titus from Final Fantasy X. Oh, yes. And of course, Obi Wan Kenobi. It wouldn't be coffee with Kenobi without yours truly. The force is strong here indeed. Previously on Coffee with Kenobi. In the greater scheme of things, I think it's interesting to see how his relationships are involved. And he goes from having a very close relationship to a droid, to a very close relationship to an android, and then finally a close relationship to an actual human being, or at least a, well, an alien, a Twi'lek. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's, he's moving up in the world in that regard. <laughs> This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Kenobi, show number 131. We are your spoiler-free place for Star Wars discussion, analysis, and rhetoric. I am enjoying some One Nation coffee today in a Lucasfilm Black coffee mug, and very much looking forward to having some Star Wars conversation with each and every one of you. On today's show, we will have my co-host from Looking at Lucasfilm, Jim Hill, and CWK newsman Tom Gross joining me. We're going to talk with Jim about theme park updates, including some surprises about Galaxy's Edge. And then on the coffee chat, we're going to explain that a little bit more. And Tom and I are going to talk about some Star Wars news, as well as kind of catch up on some things. And the conversation kind of goes in some different places, which is great. Very reminiscent of our Patreon CWK pour over, which we will talk about later on in the show. So pull up a chair, grab your favorite coffee mug, and let's have some coffee with Kenobi. And now, let's see what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week. San Diego Comic-Con is rapidly approaching, and I'm very excited to announce that I will be broadcasting live from the Topps booth near the Lucasfilm Pavilion. Much more information on that in the next few coming weeks. Very, very exciting. They've got some great stuff at the booth, as we'll talk about later. And I am honored. I mean, it's my first time at Comic-Con, and I'm going to be broadcasting from there live. It should be a fantastic time. On the not-so-fantastic side of things, there was a bit of a hiccup with the microphone for some of the conversation on today's show. So you'll still be able to hear me, but the microphone will not be the same consistent quality, such as what you're hearing right now. However, it's a really good conversation. I didn't want to record it again because I really like where things went with myself and Jim, as well as with myself and Tom. So please bear with me. I think you will still be happy with the conversation. So who talks first? You talk first? I talk first? Joining us today for a cup of coffee is my co-host and one of our very favorite people to listen to about Star Wars and the Disney theme parks, Jim Hill. Oh, aren't you nice? Thank you, Dan. I could always love being here on Coffee with Kenobi and... Uh, just have to get my my Tim Hortons mug over here. Uh, that's I, I, again. That's I'm, I'm I live in New Hampshire, which is almost Canada, uh, and <laughs> was very pleased when I was was traveling to the Midwest earlier this month. Uh, that when you get close to Buffalo, you actually get Tim Hortons. So I was able to score a Tim Hortons mug. So nice, uh, well done. Yes, well, you know, we all have our trophies. So um, that's right. Well, that's perfect. It's a coffee mug. So you, um, I can't wait to get all the new coffee mugs at Galaxy's Edge. What, what's going on with Galaxy's Edge? Oh dear Lord. Um, well, <laughs> that's a promising okay. start. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I mean, did, 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 for starters, mm-hmm. you know, just over the past month or so, we finally got. You know, I, I, I think you and I have talked on previous shows about the fact that. Anaheim is running, uh, you know, ahead of schedule, uh, or at least as as far as the Orlando, uh, you know, park is, is is set. And you know, they Disney Parks and Resorts finally came out and said, okay, we admit it, you know, that that uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge will open in Anaheim for the summer of 2019, and the Galaxy's Edge that's being built in Orlando at Disney's Hollywood Studios will open in the late fall of 2019. And now you, you have to understand that the way Disney works its calendar, when they say late fall, that could be December 20th. Um, so, you know, that it, it's I, and talking with folks associated with the project, part of the issue is, of course, the, um, the Star Wars Hotel. 
uh, which, by the way, uh, you know, I just recently heard that uh, Disney is out doing some focus grouping on the name uh, for the hotel, which uh, I guess the first name that they came up with, uh, <laughs> the way they refer to it is it's uh, Las Vegas meets the Jetsons. It was like, that's a little too on the nose. Can we go try again? So, um, but I, see that the, because the hotel has a transportation system that is going to seamlessly deliver guests from the hotel over to uh, Batu, uh, or should we say Black Spire Outpost at, at this point, um, that, you know, that, that this is causing kind of a slowdown. Uh, that, you know, there, there's going to be upwards of a six months, maybe as much as an eight month lag between when uh, Galaxy's Edge opens in Anaheim in May of 2019 and when we get the, the opening in Orlando. Though, to be completely blunt, the folks in Orlando are perfectly fine with this delay, largely because they want to learn from Anaheim's I won't say mistakes, but let's say experience of handling the crowds for, for Galaxy's Edge. They, they want to, you know, to, to, to see how people come in, what they immediately go to, what they don't go to, uh, you know, the, the, what catches their eye, that sort of thing. So then they'll be ready when the Orlando version opens. Um, but, but you actually, again, you, you were down there for Galactic Nights for the, the, the wonderful presentation or the update on what's going on with, uh, you know, with this new, you know, 17 acre land uh, for Anaheim and Orlando. And, you know, what leaked out of you other than, of course, several large vehicles? Yeah, well, exactly. The, yeah, the, 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 ad, the life size ad ads thing is the thing that uh, everybody was really excited about. And, they made it seem as if for this second attraction, that's not the Falcon attraction, that we are actually going to be going up against these things. Now, the way it was painted to me, Jim, or at least the way I interpreted it, was that they these life-size ad-ads are not only going to be something to look at, to be in awe, but actually you're going to actually be going against them during the attraction itself. I'm not really sure how that works. Well, Alcatraz, you know, does put you on board the Death Star. And in fact... Um, I don't know if I've ever shared with you, they actually had an image of the ride vehicle. Uh, you know, just, it, it's, I want to say it's a four row, uh, you know, sort of, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, kind of a, a you know, cargo golf cart kind of a thing. Like open top, but you're being supposed to be driven by a droid. And at, at one point, as you're making your escape from the, and in fact, remember that the, the code name for this attraction is Alcatraz in house. Oh, I didn't uh, know so, that. That's cool. Yeah, that's so. Well, again, that's the whole point. You're escaping. Um, so you, you you basically roll into the armory, you know, on board the Death Star. You know where they they they've got the vehicles. You know these two giant Avas who, you know, they again they they their heads pivot toward you and, you know, begin to power up and shoot at you. So, um, you know, and, and again, you, as you mentioned at this event, these are full size, uh, vehicles. In fact, um, when Doug Chang, when they took him to the work site and showed him the room that the Addis were going to be in, I mean, it was only bare steel at this point. There was dirt on the ground. But they point out, it's like, Doug, this room, this room all by itself is almost as big as the entire show building for Pirates of the Caribbean. Wow. So, I mean, that's the thing. The, the size and the scale of what they're going to be doing uh, at, at, uh, at Galaxy's Edge is, you know, this is all next-gen stuff. This is, um, you know... Uh, you know we have never seen anything like it, right? Is that fair to say? Yeah, and, and in fact, it's for me, what I find fascinating about this is that, um, you know, remember, there really wouldn't be a Star Wars or, or Star Wars Galaxy's Edge if it hadn't been for what Universal did in 2010, which is open the original Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Islands of Adventure. And 
for me, I can't help but notice that in the exact same window, 2019, when the first Galaxy's Edge is opening, um, that's when Universal is going to open its brand new Harry Potter attraction, this Forbidden Forest ride. The uh, roller coaster where, that you and Len were talking about? Yep. On a recent yep. show? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's sort of the notion that, Again, in a weird sort of way, we have Harry Potter to thank for this this amazing experience we're about to happen. But but Universal's not ceding any ground at all. I mean, you know, they're they're coming hard charging at Disney, and and they're trying to redefine a coaster at the same time that Disney, between the Money and Falcon experience, where you know there's going to be six people, just six people, sitting in that uh, the cockpit, you know, flying the Money and Falcon. And I, again, a relatively small group of people, you know, eight or nine passengers riding with this in this droid power vehicle through, you know, the halls of the Death Star trying to, to escape the First Order. So, so the, um, there's the thing that's throwing me because the Death Star is well before the First Order is in existence. Are they, are they creating a new Death Star for Batu or is this is what's going on? Well, you know, that the. the uh, the or is it just like a giant uh, resistance star destroyer or something like that? Now, I've had it explained to me that, uh, you know, at least the early iterations of the attraction uh, were the Death Star. But again, as you pointed out, uh, you oh. know, that this has become, you know, they, in fact, what's fascinating to me is that we're seeing uh, pieces of the films folded in. And of course, you know, if you you consider the size and the scale of the vehicles we've been shown uh, in Last Jedi, you know the 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 you know the super destroyer, so to speak, yeah. that you know Snook. Laura Dern's that's it exactly, and mm-hmm. that that uh, you know that Laura Dern took out. And more to the point, if you remember the scene where uh, Rose and oh, why am I blanking his name? Finn, a uh, jump, Finn. Uh, yeah. when they are on the deck and they're they're surrounded. By you know you know the, literally this, this invasion force. In fact, that 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 wonderful moment where BB-8, yes, it is revealed. You know, the inside of the the, the walker, you know, to support them. Um, this is this is supposedly the space that you're entering into. You know, the the notion that you know this is where all of this armament is being kept ahead of an invasion. So it's entirely possible that from when the Imagineers started working on this, when it was up to the Death Star, and, you know, and in fact, that's what's been kind of intriguing when you talk with the Imagineers about uh, the whole uh, Black Spire Outpost project, that there's been an attempt um, to keep the construct as loose as possible you know, to allow you know them to to sort of if something comes along in one of the newer movies or that sort of thing to like, ooh, let's grab that. Now, at the same time, though, you know, you know for example, they they want to give nods to um, you know, the stuff that that has happened previously that they love. I mean, so of course we we have the Millennium Falcon, which we've seen in you know the original trilogy, and we've seen in Solo, and we've seen in. Uh, you know, the, the uh, Force Awakens and Last Jedi. But at the same time, I love that as you're looking at the roof line of the rooftops, you know, there's, you know, what is it? The shuttle from the ghost from Star Wars Rebels is, oh, you know. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, depending on what sort of Star Wars fan you are and, you know, which film you enter into, I mean, again, you know, just, uh, for me, you know, I love the notion that, you know, if you're, for example, you're at Disneyland and you, uh, you know, enter through the career country entrance, you'll come through that forest and here's a fleet of X-Wings, which we've all known and loved since, you know, 77. Right. Um, so, but that's the thing. It's, it's, it's trying to be all things to all levels of, of Star Wars fans and, and that, that's genuinely getting challenging. Um, I don't think so. By the way, is, was there ever any thought uh, on this entire project, Tim, for Batu to be a different planet in, at Disneyland versus Walt Disney World, or did they always want it to be exactly the same thing? I think it would have been kind of fascinating to be completely different entities. Well, I mean, it work. I don't know. 
Well, I, you know, to be honest, one of the problems here was that initially, remember, the, the pushback was, um, you know, it's like, should we do a land that, you know, you know, a plant that people know? Should we do Hoth? Should we do Tatooine? Should we do Endor? And eventually, you know, the, the, the folks that were working on, you know, uh, the Galaxy's Edge project were like, look, this is not about Luke's it's Star Wars adventure. We don't want to relive that. We don't want to relive, relive what Ray's gone through. We, this is supposed to be your Star Wars adventure. And so creating that canvas, you know, um, you know, and, and, and then, you know, it's just the whole notion of, are we really, you know, you know, it's not necessarily a blank canvas, you know, uh, just the notion of if we're going to do this and we're going to design it, you know, down to, you know, I think we talked on previous shows about, you know, this like, Ooh, look at that, you know, look at the conduit there. Um, you know, it's just sort of like it probably makes more sense to do two of the same thing. I mean, and they're not exactly the same. I remember, remember uh, Orlando has two entrances versus, you know, Walt Disney or, or Disneyland Park will have, you know, the three entrances. Um, and, you know, there will be little futzes and, and different centers. And of course, remember that, you know, you know, the Orlando version is going to have this, you know, Star Wars hotel with its, its transportation system that, you know, that brings you back and forth, you know, from, from the orbiting space station down to the planet's surface. So, um, they'll, they'll have their own little bends and differences. Um, but yeah, you know, for now it's, it's all about just getting these things completed. Uh, and you know, they, they're, you know, what's funny, at least in Orlando is that as soon as they can, you know, just for example, over this, this past week or so, they've been finaling the show lighting and the, uh, you know, the, the bringing in the music component and that sort of thing, which means they've been actually able to pull the construction teams off of Toy Story Land, and it's like you know, thanks for doing such great work. Now get the hell over to Star Wars Land. We need every hand we can get. So um, right, Let, let's take a really really quick break, and when we come back, I want to ask you a little bit more about the Millennium Falcon attraction. Cool. This is Coffee with Kenobi. This is Coffee with Kenobi. Oh, pasta cream. Patreon time. Patreon is something that helps Coffee with Kenobi in so many amazing ways. And none of it is possible without people like Ben Elkington, Rebecca Raven, Terry Lee, Dennis Keithley, Lieutenant Law, Aaron Harris, Chris Savarka, Angela Sauce, Mediocre Jedi, Chris Metz, LJ Souter, Thea Selby, Jeff Ellis, Daz Davies, Christian Dale, Jason Hall, Brian McKinney, Connie Shee, Mike Audette, Jared Cantor, B.J. Smith, Eric Struthers, Nick Deco, and Mark Suter. On our Patreon page, we have an exclusive podcast for you called CWK Pour Over. It is something that I host with Tom Gross and Corey Club, who are no strangers to coffee with Kenobi family members. And we have an absolute blast. We talk about Star Wars. We talk about all kinds of geek things. On the most recent show, Tom talks for a while about why he doesn't really like the Toy Story franchise and why it hit him in a different way than some of us, and it's really fascinating, and it's also fun. We give them a little bit of a hard time, but that's all fun when you're with your friends. And then we spend quite a bit of time talking about Celebration Chicago. We haven't talked about that too much on the show. We have a little bit, of course, because how could you not? It's Celebration. But we talk about it in a little more depth, and Tom has never been to a Celebration, so we give some tips early on for just Celebrations in general, so it's a great, great time. For Patreon, what you do is you contribute once a month at the level that you see fit if you donate just a dollar a month, you get access to Lens, which is like Insta Story or Snapchat. And it's me sharing behind the scenes things with you, video and photos. And at Comic Con, I'll be doing this quite a bit. It's always fun when I travel to share with all of you on Lens, so be sure to check in for that. And for five bucks a month, you get the access to the CWK pour over, which I talked about before, as well as recognition on Twitter. And for ten dollars, it's Discord access to our Discord board. You can also get coffee mugs, t shirts. There's even a phone case that's really, really cool. And if you donate a certain amount, you can host this show with me 
Coffee with Kenobi four times in one month. So be sure to go to www.patreon.com slash coffee with Kenobi to find out more and have access to CWK pour over. We're back and uh, we have a quick um, second part of our conversation with Jim Hill and I, Jim, I wanted to ask you really quickly. So we've got the millennium Falcon. I'm assuming it's going to be, you know, one, one scale life size, but this is the building, in essence, where the attraction is going to take place. Now, are, is everyone going to be able to kind of walk through the interior of the Falcon, even though I'm assuming there'll be multiple rides going on at the same time? Like, how is that going to work? Well, again, you're going to be heading back to, um, I want to say it's it's Docking Bay 9. Hmm. Um, it, now, that the, there's two designated uh docking bay areas we've got a docking bay seven which is going to be a food cargo area and a docking bay seven in a weird sort of way is going to be sort of the the food courty section of uh of the you falcon know, or batu uh oh, batu all okay. right so now if you head over to nine i believe you access it through merchants row um this is where uh you you, you begin your experience and and Sadly, there's a chunk of this that that, that that fell by the wayside. At one point, uh, as you were making your way through the queue, there was going to be a photo op with Chewbacca aboard uh, the Millennium Falcon. They were actually going to have him with the three-dimensional chess set, and you know you'd be able to get a you know wonderful image capture there. But cool. um, you know the the problem was when they began play testing it. Um, they just, it really impacted capacity because, you know, who wouldn't want to hang with Chewbacca, you know? So, um, that, the, the, they're reconfiguring that. I mean, face it, you've already got, uh, in launch bay, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, the opportunity to visit with Chewbacca, likewise, you know, Kylo Ren and, and sure. that sort of thing. Um, so they're looking to accommodate those experiences inside of, of Black Spire Outpost. In fact, that's the other thing people need to remember, that if you're, if you're very fond of Launch Bay, uh, make sure you visit it, you know, get, get the California version before spring of next year, because um, that's going away. Um, you know, uh, Star Tours, the ride, will supposedly hang on uh, at least for 18 months to two years. I've heard that's, but that's more of a capacity thing. Mm. Um, I'd hate to hear that. Well, it's, it's, it's an interesting question um, that both of the Disney parks, uh, Disneyland Park and Disney Hollywood Studios, are puzzling that you know it, it's like look when you open galaxy's edge and you have this incredible story you know immersive storytelling land um how do you then justify that you have a star wars themed attraction right outside it doesn't link up with these stories at all right um you know now mind you at least as far as um you know, uh, Disney's Hollywood Studios. In fact, I think we talked about this in our previous copy with Kenobi that, uh, you know, that they're going to keep at least the Tatooine traders open because that's where, if you want traditional theme park garb, your, your t shirts, your mugs, your, you know, uh, you know, that sort of thing, this is where the Galaxy's Edge stuff will be kept because, of course, the conceit is that, you know, when you're actually inside of a uh, black square outpost, everything's been brought in from off world. You know, there will be no traditional theme park merch. Um, whereas for Disneyland, you know, the concern is like, well, this isn't just a hundred feet outside, you know, of the, you know, the, uh, the grand Avenue gate. I mean, you have to walk all the way across Disneyland yeah. to, to get, you know, from back to Tomorrowland. You know, yeah. Yeah, so, um, and uh, to be completely honest here, um, you know, uh, you know, we're going to see in California a Bugs Land close uh, at, uh, you know, uh, Disney's California Adventure in September. 
because they are so afraid of the crowds that are going to be coming to go to the California version of Galaxy's Edge that they are fast-tracking this amazing set of Marvel-themed attractions that will basically turn that park's Hollywood backlot area into sort of a Marvel superhero land. I mean, we've already seen the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout attraction that will sort of serve as the the flag that's stuck in the ground there. But uh, a a Bug's Life, a Bug's Land is going away for an amazing new Spider-Man attraction. And uh, once that's up and running, uh, supposedly the plan is to pull the four simulators that are in Disneyland uh, that are, uh, you know, currently being used to present Star Tours and move those over to California Adventure to do a recreation of Hong Kong Disneyland's Iron Man experience, which is another simulator-based attraction. Um, wow. So, yeah. That's, that's, um, that's smart. And, boy, they, boy, can you imagine? What, what is our Star Wars and theme park experience going to look like in the next five years? It's going to be amazing. Jim, as always... Thank you so much for coming back and having a cup of coffee with us. Where can people find you to get more of what you are offering in the world of Star Wars and Disney? Well, you know, they can head on over to the Jim Hill Media Podcast Network where, God help us, we've got Disney Dish, we've got Fine Tuning with Drew Taylor, we've got Universal Giant with Dustin Fuse, and and then there's this show I do with Dan Zare, you know, uh, <laughs> something about Lucasfilm. I, I forget what it's called. Oh, I love um, that guy. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's good. He's good. Um, but yeah, the, no, that that's, you know, um, it, it's keeping me busy. But you know, again, that that's, you know, the, the, oh, you know, the look of, looking with Lucasfilm these days, they're definitely keeping us busy between yes. Solo and Episode Nine and everything else. You know, in fact. It, 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 have we heard anything about Star Wars Resistance yet? Not not a thing. I'm hoping that when I go to Comic-Con next month that I'll be able to get some pieces of information. I, I'm hoping to get a chance to talk with Dave Filoni and maybe maybe I can get um, something out of him. I, it's unlikely he's a vault, but, you know, it's worth a shot. Well, if you do, I, I, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll come back with the espresso and we, we, we're going to have another beverage then. I love it. I love it. Well, uh, Jim, again, thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take another break. And when we come back, Tom will bring us the latest news. This is Coffee with Kenobi. Greetings. This is Obi-Wan Kenobi, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. One Nation Coffee is the official brew of Coffee with Kenobi. Four lifelong friends had this idea that grew into some of the best coffee you were ever going to have. They even have a subscription service that is really convenient and you will be guaranteed to wake up every morning with the best tasting coffee in the galaxy. Be sure to go to www.thatonenationcoffee.com today to order the official brew of Coffee with Kenobi. And if you enter the code KENOBI10, you'll get 10% off your order. If you were to say to me, what do you love the most about Harry's Razors? It would be really easy for me to answer, convenience and comfort. When I need to shave, which is every day, I need to make sure that I've got razor blades in the house, that I've got shaving cream. And because of Harry's, not only do I have that, but I have some of the best stuff you can possibly imagine. Harry stands behind the quality of their blades. They know that switching razors is not an easy decision. So they created a trial offer, which is harrys.com slash CWK family. Harry's founders are fed up with overpaying for expensive razors with unnecessary features. They know that a great shave comes down to great blades made with sharp, durable steel, that lasts. That's why they bought a factory that's been making some of the highest quality blades in the world for over 95 years. By selling directly to you over the internet, Harry's can offer their blades at a price much lower than the leading brand. Just $2 per blade compared to $4 or more. And there's a quality guarantee. If you don't love your shave, let Harry's know within 30 days and they'll give you a full refund. Now you might be wondering, all right, I am totally in, but what are the details of this trial offer? Well, it's a $13 value trial set that comes with everything you need for a close, comfortable shave, a weighted ergonomic handle, five blade razor with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel, and a travel blade cover. And that's all a lot of great stuff that you need. And it's so much cheaper than anything else you'll find anywhere. Listeners of my show can redeem their trial set at harrys.com slash CWK family. Make sure you go to harrys.com slash CWK family to redeem your offer and let them know I sent you to help support the show. is 
our new segment, but it's also a bit of a, a catch-up time. As I said at the top of the show, this is a bit of a, a different show from the norm. We had Jim Hill on for the first half, and for the second half, we've got CWK newsman Tom Gross. Tom, how you doing, buddy? I'm um, fantastic. What a great, what a great conversation. Uh, looking forward to it, and I've uh, got some great news tonight too. I know, I know. I'm excited about that. You, uh, you and I, I, I can't even tell you how many people have asked me uh, to comment on your opinion of Toy Story over the past couple of weeks. <laughs> Is that right? You know, you pour over, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you, everybody knows we've got our, our Patreon show, CWK Pour Over, with you and me and Corey. And it's so much fun. And the reason we talked about was, uh, well, we were talking about Pixar stuff, but that yeah. was great. That was so fun. It was. Um, and I, you know, it's never my intent to drop a bomb uh, during a show, but, uh, but boy, I, 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 more fun. I sure did that, that time. And I uh, hope everyone else gets a chance to listen to, you know, my, my shocking news about um, my, my least favorite Pixar show. Um, no, you know, that's, cool. what, that's, that's the what beauty that of the CWK Pro, though, right? That's what I was going to say. That's the beauty of the show is, is, you know, we kind of, uh, um, lay it all out there and um and just kind of open up and we share and it's fun oh it's so much fun not that dan you aren't just great to talk to but it's so great also to have uh, Corey come along and uh the three of us just we have we have so many things in common but obviously in the last uh well yeah. in the last show at least we found out that there are some differences out there too and uh and that's okay that's good. That that makes for some great conversation. Um, helps everyone to get to know who we are better, so that on a weekly basis on Coffee with Kenobi, they ah, it's it's like just hanging out with friends. And and I can't wait for uh, for celebration to meet so many people, um, our regular listeners, and maybe meet some new people. But uh, but create such an awesome community. I can honestly say, oh yeah, for sure. And and I can honestly say that with CWK Pour Over. I learned some things about both you and Corey that I had no idea about, like uh, some of the things that everybody's into. And, and really, we had one show. This is going to become a commercial for Patreon. That one, you know, hashtag we're not hiding any secrets. We want you to subscribe. <laughs> um, we, uh, I learned that some of the things that he, Corey and you love in fandom and some things that you don't love. I think we had a particularly amusing conversation about pro wrestling and um, – hearing me gush about it which i probably didn't expect would happen <laughs> i know right some of these topics we we just you know we have strong opinions about them but they don't come up very often and yeah. so um and so it's a format like that that just sort of i don't know out of the blue they come up and holy cow you know i know in some of the past shows some things i've really enjoyed is um sharing my my love of spider-man and yeah. how I came across Spider Man as a as a character, um, which I always I always think is unique, um, uh, not because it's my story, but because it always seems to be different than the way other people have come across it. Um, but yeah, the pro, whole pro wrestling thing, and um, and I think uh, Corey had some interesting observations of the way you eat movie candy. <laughs> okay. So the pour over that <laughs> coming out this Sunday does talk about that. And I can truly, sincerely say, and I may have mentioned this last week on show 130, but I've never laughed so hard while recording a show in five years. I laughed so hard and it's just, it's great because you guys really do bring out the best in me. You mentioned before we started recording that uh, you're, you're in a, a a thing over the summer where you're having like it's a, an education uh, not a conference or a summit but it's a training thing mm -hmm. or something yeah. project chris and you were saying how everybody has a a star wars story can you kind of explain that because i really like how you explained it yeah i was sharing with them we were inter just introducing ourselves because we've come to we've come together in a place where it's people from all around the country wyoming and virginia and chicago and um portland oregon and uh and so we we're just sort of introducing ourselves and i introduced myself as as um as you know a, a, a nerd someone who loves nerd culture but i've loved it since even before nerd culture was a thing and so star wars came up and everyone was really interested um and what i found interesting and i find this interesting in just talking uh to people about coffee with kenobi or star wars in general is even when someone doesn't have um a massive interest 
in Star Wars, like like we do, um, they still have a Star Wars story because they've grown up with it. Um, anyone who's our age has grown up with it. And, um, and you know, kids that are teenagers in their 20s, notice I say kids in their 20s. Uh, that, I guess that explains how old I am. Uh, but, um, but, you know, they've, it's been reintroduced, and so it's new to them. And so even though, you know, my brother, who hated my Star Wars toys laying all over the place, he still has a Star Wars story about all my toys. And so and that's what I love. I love about Star Wars. It is, it is something that everybody can relate to, um, whether they love the story or whether it's just something that they've experienced. Yeah, that's, and that's why it's a mythology that, you know, not only is there a fiction to the mythology, but there's also the nonfiction to the mythology and I, I still believe Star Wars is so strong because of community, even though, you know, people are going to disagree. And I don't I think that's healthy as long as it's done in a healthy fashion. As I always say, it's okay to disagree, not to be disagreeable. But yeah, well said, well said. So you uh, uh, you're trying to trick me into getting you some San Diego Comic Con swag. Am I right? <laughs> Well, I have dropped hints along the way, and, yes. and that's that's not to say that that's not going to happen again. Uh, <laughs> soon. Well, I would do the same thing. What are the main things you got your eyes on in the exclusives? Um, well, first of all, I think last I think it was last week we talked about those pops. Yeah, and I, I know so, you yeah. you love uh, Cad Bane. I do, and uh, and while he is, you know, I I do like him. Um, uh, any you know any pops are are always awesome and uh, tonight we're going to talk about a, uh, a a book exclusive not a book exclusive but a cover right. to a book that's going to be exclusive that is pretty sweet looking yeah and so um, yeah things like that um, you know um, and I'm sure that there's more to come out but uh, um, you know, kind of really into the solo things right now. Those are cool. Uh, Clone Wars with a 10 year anniversary coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, th- you know, I'm sure that there'll be some of those types of things. Um, Ahsoka uh, items. See the, we know those those jumbo Kenner action figures I have. Um, I've got the Snow Trooper, the Solo from Hoth, and then Luke from Hoth. They're yeah. going to have, have a Boba Fett uh, one from Return of the Jedi. Oh, is that and right? I figured just a different card, but I think that I've always thought, even though Boba Fett isn't my favorite character, I mean, I like him fine, but I've always thought that the Boba Fett action figure, the Kenner one, might be the best Star Wars action figure ever made. And to have a, a, a giant one like that might be really, really cool to have. Wow, there's there's that's like a pour over comment right there. Yeah, no, it's um, just it's just a gorgeous man. thing. There was so much mystery about it before it came out and it's just, it was just so beloved. I remember very vividly driving home from school when I lived in New Orleans on the school bus. I remember I had just received Boba Fett in the mail and we hadn't, I hadn't seen Empire Strikes Back yet because it hadn't come out, but the figure was something that Kenner mailed. I remember yeah. holding it out of the bus and having his arms up and I saw the little rocket jetpack. And so I was flying him as we were driving. I mean, <laughs> now when I think about the fact that I was doing that with a Boba Fett figure or any Star Wars figure, I'm like, dude, put your arm inside the bus. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's where it gets cut off. Are you kidding? But no, right. it just it just brings back a lot of wonderful memories. I mean, a lot of these figures do, but these, um, and I'm very lucky because I'm, as you know, in the studio, I've got all of the Kenner figures displayed right in front of me. So I'm just looking at them as we say this. And yeah, it's, that's just, that's just great. That's the thing about Star Wars that, uh, one of the many things about stories that I love so well. So I'm definitely have my eyes on that one. Yeah. I share, I share your sentiment with uh, the whole Boba Fett, you know, not, not a favorite character necessarily of mine, not that I hate him or anything, but not a favorite character, but certainly the cool at one at the time, one of the coolest looking characters. Yes. Um, something yes. about that Mandalorian helmet before we ever knew it was a Mandalorian helmet. Um, was just very cool. And in fact, I think a lot of the Star Wars characters that wear helmets, I mean, obviously Darth Vader, um, but a lot of the Star Wars characters that wear helmets, the helmets are so neat. Yeah. Um, they, they and, they add that, and add that mystery to the character. So I totally feel that you said it best. And I've never really thought of Boba Fett that way, but that's a, that's very close to how I feel about um, about that character. Huh, and you know, when you say that too, like I realize. 
I've, I've always really, I think I liked Boba Fett more before Return of the Jedi came out. But I do like the poetry of how Han Solo defeats him. That That's never really bothered me. I think that's kind of poetical justice. But I, I don't know. I just, I think he was just a lot cooler in The Empire Strikes Back, even though he doesn't really do much in either of the movies. And then in the special mm-hmm. edition, when he kind of was flirting with one of Jabba's dancers, I just kind of rolled my eyes at that. I'm like, oh, geez, really? It, Wait, did, you, yeah. did you really need to add that into the film? Well, like, what he, makes, can, he be, can he be cool and, and tough and uh, ominous without having to be a, a ladies' man, too? I mean, does that really have to go? Right. I never thought the helmet was very much for lady man act, yeah. uh, you know, when he's standing there in that position. But you, I, I know what you're saying about the Empire Strikes Back aura because he looks so cool standing there with that orange light in the uh, carbon yes. freezing room. Yes. Oh, it's so ominous. Uh, and when he when he points his weapon, I think when Chewie's throwing the stormtroopers around a little bit. Yeah. Oh, he is so cool. So That's cool in that. You know, Boba Fett, I have a good Boba Fett story. Okay. Um, it, it was in the days when, um, you know, we had to wait for movies uh, in, in the original trilogy. Back in our and day. So, yeah. And so back in our day, son, uh, we, um, so after Empire Strikes Back and the I Am Your Father, my neighbor and I, now, I, no, keep in mind, we're pretty young, but uh, so my neighbor and I were, were debating is Darth Vader really Luke's father? And so we were talking about the possibilities. Who else in the movie could be Luke's father that maybe, you know, because we really didn't know that much other than, wow, this was big news. And so we made bets when Jedi was about to come out. We made bets on who is actually Luke's father. And so there are a few of us involved in this bet. And my neighbor across the street, I was a smart one. I took Darth Vader because he said so. And I believed my authority figures. But my neighbor across the street put money down on Boba Fett was actually Luke's father. Oh, my. And, uh, and another, another guy that, that kind of hung out with us, uh, he put money on Han Solo was Luke's father, which I knew there's no way that was going to happen. I remember so I thought it was funny. saying that when years and years and years ago, and I never yeah. it was serious, yeah. But, uh, but, you know, and I think it goes back to that helmet thing. So the helmet adds the mystery. And so my friend thought, well, Darth Vader's taken, so I guess I better take the next most mysterious person in the movie, <laughs> and that would be Boba Fett. And so he was thoroughly disappointed in Jedi when Boba Fett fell down into the Sarlacc and it belched and, and he was passing his money over to me right there in the, in the dark theater. Oh, wow. Um, and then I, and then I went and got popcorn with it. So there you go. Was, See, was actually this was a, this was a completely impromptu conversation. It actually kind of feels like a CWK pour over. Don't you think? Doesn't it? That, that feels like a pour over story right there. <laughs> yeah, it does. Just random stuff, and suddenly something catches fire, and, you, and everybody has something to weigh in and contribute. Uh, yeah. and, and again, of course, Corey's on them as well, so it adds to it. So that's that's cool. That was actually a fun little segment that uh, just sort of organically happened, which is great. Now let's go ahead and take that break and come back, and Tom will share some of those news stories that we alluded to. This oh, yeah. is Coffee with Kenobi. Coffee, tea, or me? Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's Coffee with Kenobi. One Nation Coffee is the official brew of Coffee with Kenobi. Four lifelong friends had this idea that grew into some of the best coffee you will ever have. It smells amazing and tastes even better. Check out www.onenationcoffee.com to set up a coffee subscription and help your morning get started off the right way. And put in the code KENOBI10 to get a 10% discount. Getting ready to plan that summer vacation? Miles Fan Travel has you covered with signature service and expert advice to help clients maximize their vacation time and dollar. They help your family enjoy everything the Disney theme parks and the cruise lines have to offer, help plan every detail, and share invaluable tips to help make all of your family's Disney dreams come true. Check out www.milesfantravel.com today and get your Walt Disney World or Disneyland vacation started off the right way. we're going to do the news segment. So, Tom, what do we got going on there? Because, you know, we, we usually do it the third part of the show. But this is the fourth part of the show, but we're going to we're going to do the news here. So what, what's going on? 
let's hit it. Ten years ago in 2008, Star Wars The Clone Wars hit our television screens, bringing us a young Padawan Ahsoka Tano with their master Anakin Skywalker, among others. So to celebrate this landmark, StarWars.com announced this week that they will host a Clone Wars 10-year panel at the San Diego Comic Convention. Dave Filoni and listed now as special guests, will share a look back at the show and share many incredible stories. The Clone Wars animated series lasted six seasons, which... Uh, which and was an introduction to the saga for many fans. This series was an awarded an Emmy, and arguably, I say arguably because I believe this, some of the most interesting Star Wars stories and characters were introduced in this time. The panel in San Diego will be held on Thursday, July 19. And I will definitely be there. I, I was so stoked because I'm only going to be at Comic Con for a couple of days. And when I got this press release, the first thing I did was check the date. And when I saw that it was on Thursday, I was like, yes, yes, because I got to go see this. I mean, I, I love Clone Wars, and I've often attributed that series as kind of reigniting a spark for me in regards to how I view the prequels. And I think it kind of brought Star Wars um, back to a place of vibrancy that was sort of lacking mm-hmm. between 2005 and you know 2008. Clone Wars was exactly what the doctor ordered. And, uh, you know, the earlier shows were good. Some were really, really good. But towards the last couple of seasons, they just became incredible. You know, and they were oh. somewhere solid, but then they just became truly remarkable. So this is this is great. I'm, I'm hoping for some sort of a, I don't know, I don't think there'll be any announcements that anything's going to happen. But this is fantastic. I'm really, really thrilled about it. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad to hear that uh, that you're going to be there on July 19th. I there was a little part of me that thought, hmm, maybe a special guest will be someone that I know. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Yes, yeah, me. That would be very cool. But I, I, I am going to back you on this Clone Wars as being such a phenomenal, re-energizing uh, piece to the Star Wars saga. I'm, and I'm not kidding. I think, I think there are some some of those uh, story arcs in the Clone Wars are my favorite yeah. Star Wars stories. Now, don't hold me to the fire and make me name one right now. It's been too. You knew years. I was thinking that. I was thinking that. Yeah, um, but I will, I will say this, though. It is because of the Clone Wars that Obi-Wan Kenobi is my favorite Star Wars character. Um, I, That's so cool. I love I loved where they took him uh, as a general, the Republic, and the role that he held there, and and so many leadership positions, and you know he and he balanced being a military guy with being a Jedi so well, and I loved his his mentorship of um, of Anakin, as well as uh, at times bringing Ahsoka along and teaching her the stories and the and the skills that she needed. Um, I just I feel that Obi Wan Kenobi was the hit. And the star of that whole show, even though I know that's that wasn't the intent, um, but it brought me so much appreciation of the Alec Guinness Obi Wan yeah. when he talks about the Clone Wars in his hut with Luke. You know that he knew so much and he gave so little there, um, but then it also brought appreciation of where he was in Rebels, and um, and you know we know the conclusion to that story. Uh, so, but I, I think the, I just, I love the stories of, um, of the clones and, um, and some of their independence as well as, as what brought them together. I just, so much stuff in that, um, stands out, uh, as such strong, um, Star Wars stories. For sure. It might be neat. I, I guess the thing that surprised me the most about this I was hoping there would be some sort of Lucasfilm panel, and I'm and I'm glad that there is. And there may be more, who knows? But the fact that it's been ten years is really weird to me. I mean, the, that's a long time, but it also, in many ways, it feels like it's longer. In many ways, it feels like it's not. I know that it's probably incoherent, a drivel, but it's it's kind of crazy to me. I don't know. It oh, it seems like it does seem like such a long time ago uh, for me because I I didn't really experience the Clone Wars until about four years ago. 
Um, once they were all out, I finally decided to, to sit down and watch them. Um, so it doesn't seem 10 years old to me mm-hmm. because my experience with them was only, you know, four, four, I think it was four or five years ago. Um, when I started re when I started watching them, uh, back to back and, and for me, I know people can sit down and watch a whole series of a show in, you know, a day, it took me uh, probably about a year and a half to finally get through all season, uh, six seasons, but, uh, oh, yeah. but yeah, how, how cool. And it just, it, it, the 10 year anniversary just kind of, I don't know, makes it feel and makes the whole Star Wars saga continue to feel like the mythology that it is, you know, when you Such talk a- about such a long long time to be gone and a short time to be there did you catch the reference let me stop and ponder that for a second no i don't know that reference really that's grateful dead jerry garcia box of rain my gosh he's one of the guys i wanted to sit down and have dinner with oh that's a pour over show doggone it (laughs) box of rain man yes i knew i knew it from somewhere but man i did not place that well done (laughs) well hey let's move on to the next story um and now dan whether you loved the Last Jedi, which I know you did, I did, or you hated it, which we know some did. You now have a chance to revel in the beauty of the film or give it another chance to revisit the moments that changed Ray, Luke, Leia, Poe, Finn, Chewbacca's lives forever. Star Wars The Last Jedi is now available to view on Netflix. While the quick streaming service release, uh, or I'm sorry, while the quick streaming release by Disney is nice, it will be short lived, however, for sure, because of the upcoming release of the Disney streaming service sometime in the next 18 months or so. While you won't have access to all the documentary features that come with the home release DVD and Blu ray, um, you can still have constant access to catch those little scenes, to forward, to reverse, to stop and pause and analyze the latest film in the mainline Star Wars saga. The fact that you can stream these uh, very easily and accessibly through Netflix, I think is going to open this film to a lot more eyes. And people that were very closed off to it, I think they're going to be get a chance to visit it again. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're going to get a chance to see the the beauty of this film in the 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 excellent craftsmanship that is very vibrant throughout this film. I, I do. I still think this film is a masterpiece and I'm glad it's on Netflix because I think people need to see it. And I'm just going to say this and I, this is more of a CWK pour over attitude thing really too, but I, the movie made over a billion dollars. It's, it's not a failure. So these, uh, notions. I mean, you don't have to like it. That's totally fine. Obviously, you can do whatever you want, and you don't need my permission for that. You're your own person. But it's not a failure. It made over a billion dollars. I mean, that's that's just reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I I guess I wasn't aware that it was going to be coming out in, in Netflix, and it was sort of a surprise to me when I saw that it was released uh, this week. Yeah. Um, and my first thought about it was, and you've alluded to it, is is that for the people who did not like it. And I completely agree with you, Dan. It's not for me to say who should or who shouldn't like it or that people must like it because, hey, there's a lot of great stuff out there that I don't like. And if you listen to a pour over show, you will know that. <laughs> um, but uh, but I, what I hope it does is for the naysayers or for people who've stayed away or have decided that I didn't like it the first time I saw it, so I'm not revisiting it. And I'm, by gosh, I'm not going to buy the DVD. Exercise that right by all means. I hope that people come to Netflix and say, you know what? I'll give it a try. I'll watch the opening scene. I watched the opening scene tonight, even in my squeeze into my busy schedule this week. And, uh, and I watched that opening sequence with the dreadnought and all of that. And just, there's so many beautiful shots in there in that scene where they're about to drop the bombs and, uh, and, uh, um, Oh, Rose's sister is laying there trying to get the remote control to fall. And just the beauty, the, the beauty of all of those bombs sitting there with their lights on and in a row. And when they finally drop, it's just, ah, oh, it's, mm, it's so powerful. And it to is. watch it's the, like, a, it's the, like kind of like a dance. It's really it, beautiful. It really is that opening sequence and the, and the defiance in Poe Dameron and the disappointment in Leia just and all of that happens. And even the humor of, of Poe messing with Hux, just all of that in the opening 15 minutes of the movie. And I, I just look at that and I hope that people give it another shot and see that and see that for what it is and maybe make a decision that, you know what, I'll give it another segment. And in that next round, in that next segment where 
we go to Kylo Ren and, and his challenges with, um, with, uh, uh, Snoke and we see the next. And so I hope people try to digest it. If the whole movie together was too exhausting and disappointing, then take it apart and use the streaming service oh, yeah. that is, a, that is, that is at our, at our leisure now and take it apart and digest it in little bits and pieces and see it for what it is. Um, and you may walk away with a new look. And then again, you might walk away thinking, no, this is still, still a terrible film. And I still want to rewrite what, you know, whatever, whatever the movement is, you know, but, but hey, it's it's out here and it's available, and um, and I can appreciate that. So let's move on to our final story. Uh, last March, we shared a short excerpt from the upcoming Thrawn Alliances novel by Timothy Zahn, where we experienced a short exchange between Thrawn, Palpatine, and Vader. Well, this week, we get another peek at the novel as StarWars.com released another excerpt along with an accompanying audio clip of the released passage. This time around, we get a bit of a surprise as Thrawn has a mutually beneficial encounter with Clone Wars General Anakin Skywalker. I recommend checking out the audio clip along with the passage as there are slight variances between the two. Now, nothing that changes the story or anything, but it is interesting to see the difference between the text and, uh, and to hear the audio. And by the way, the audio is narrated by Mark Thompson, who has an extensive resume of Star Wars books, films, movies, what, uh, or TV shows of, of non-Star Wars uh, lineage, but uh, some Star Wars books that uh, Thompson is has uh, uh, narrated would be the the Thrawn novel, yeah. um, the aftermath series, and then the Last Jedi novelization. And so he's also uh, a uh, previous guest on our show. That is right. Oh my yes. goodness, I've I completely forgotten about that. So check out the uh, audio for sure because it is quite enjoyable. Now this isn't the only release regarding the novel, as the same in the same announcement on StarWars.com, a variant San Diego Comic Con exclusive cover for the book with Clone Wars era Anakin Skywalker and a dashing young, by the way, dashing young Thrawn in what looks to be a <laughs> leatherish soldier's uniform. Uh, now you should check it out on the Coffee with Kenobi website or you can go to StarWars.com to see the cover, to listen to the audio, and see the text excerpt. And the the big push that I saw today was that, oh, it's, it's Hayden Christensen back as Anakin Skywalker, which I think is really misleading because all it is is a live-action image of mm -hmm. Hayden Christensen, basically, as Anakin. I don't yeah. see why that's news or surprising because they've been doing that since 2005. Oh, yeah. I didn't but realize it was a conversation. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I was missing with that. Or maybe it's just kind of like, oh, cool. Look, he's he's here. Yeah. I mean, maybe. I guess. But that's fun. I mean, people certainly like Hayden. I I've always liked Hayden. Mm -hmm. And no, he's he's not. Um, you know, he's he's not. You know, Lawrence Olivier by any stretch of the imagination. But he he was someone that left an impact on many many generations of Star Wars fans. And the way he can handle a lightsaber, both he and Ewan McGregor can handle a lightsaber. Uh -huh. That sold Revenge of the Sith for me. They they were tremendous in in that aspect for sure. Absolutely, you know, and, and he's he's the, he's Anakin. I, I don't really? see anyone okay. else, you know. And so it it is what it is, and I enjoy it. It's a, I'm looking at the cover right now, and it is it is a very cool cover. It's a <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's great. I I normally I just. Um, get these when uh, Delroy's kind enough to send them to me, but I think I may try to find this one at Comic Con because it's it's pretty pretty cool. You've got your notebook handy, right? Uh, this this was the book cover that I was alluding to in the last segment. You got yeah. you got that right. You got that down. <laughs> I do. I it do is very that. cool. It yeah. is very very cool. Although I did love the I love the original that will be the general release with Thrawn and Vader on yeah. the cover, which is an interesting uh, juxtaposition. Nice little when you there you go. Good word. Yeah. Jinx. Juxtaposition jinx. Did we really jinx ourselves with the word juxtaposition? Yeah, that's that, <laughs> that's the kind of cerebral highbrow stuff you'll have on coffee with Kenobi. Darn right. Juxtaposition jinx. <laughs> well, hey, Tom, thanks as always. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And uh, when we come back, we're going to close out the show. This is Coffee with Kenobi. Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are the podcast you're looking for. This is... <laughs> Before we get to email, I want to thank our CWK sponsors, One Nation Coffee 
Harry's Razors, and Mouse Fan Travel. Please support them the way they support our podcast. And remember to listen to new and archived shows of Coffee with Kenobi wherever you listen to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Podcast Addict, Stitcher, Spreaker, Overcast, Blog Talk Radio, Player FM, or our website, www.coffeewithkenobi.com. And if you listen to the show through iTunes, please leave us a review. We are also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, and Tumblr, and we'd love for you to check us out there. Be sure to listen to our CWK family of shows, too, including Legends Library, Rebels Reactions, Comics with Kenobi, and Lattes with Leia. Please leave a review for each of their shows as well, and be sure to subscribe to each of them individually, as they all have their own feeds now. That is going to do it for show number 131 of Coffee with Kenobi. A big thank you to Jim Hill and Tom Gross for joining us today. We will absolutely be back next week with two new co-hosts and more Star Wars talk. Have a safe and happy 4th of July, everyone. This is the podcast you're looking for. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here. Move along. Move along.